It was one of those nights you read about in horror stories or see in movies, where the fog rolls in thick, cloaking everything more than five feet ahead of you in a dense, impenetrable white veil. I had decided to drive from Los Angeles to San Francisco via the Pacific Coast Highway, a route renowned for its breathtaking views and hairpin turns. In hindsight, choosing to embark on this journey late in the evening was my first mistake. The drive started without a hitch. I left LA around 7 p.m., hoping to beat the late-night drowsiness by drinking an ungodly amount of coffee. The Pacific Coast Highway, with its endless ocean on one side and the looming cliffs on the other, was as picturesque as advertised, even with the sun setting behind me, casting long shadows over the road. But as night fell, so did a fog so thick it felt like driving through cotton. I remember thinking it was like the world had narrowed down to just me, my car, and the next few feet of road illuminated by my headlights. Everything else was swallowed by the fog. I had been driving for a couple of hours when I first noticed something off. My car's radio, which had been playing some classic rock station, began to crackle and hiss. I figured it was just a poor signal, nothing out of the ordinary. But then, the music slowed, warped into something unrecognizable. It sounded like voices whispering just below the melody, too low to make out any words. I quickly turned it off, heart racing, and blamed it on my imagination, fueled by too much caffeine and not enough sleep. Pushing onwards, I focused on the road. That's when I sight for the first time, a figure standing on the side of the highway, just within the reach of my headlights. It was a woman, or at least it seemed like one, wearing what looked to be a long, white dress. She was facing away from me, her head tilted up towards the sky. I slowed down, heart thumping in my chest, straining my eyes to make sure I was seeing correctly. But as quickly as she appeared, she vanished into the fog as I drove past. Chills ran down my spine. Rational thoughts battled with every ghost story I'd ever heard. I told myself it was just a trick of the light or reflection of the fog. California's coast was notorious for its share of vagrants and hitchhikers, after all. I tried to shake off the knees, accelerating to put more distance between myself and the unsettling figure. The fog seemed to thicken in response, closing in around me until I felt like I was driving through a tunnel carved out of the mist. My headlights barely pierced the fog now, and the road ahead became more treacherous with each twist and turn. Hours passed in this nerve-wracking manner. My eyes were heavy, my mind on high alert. That's when things took a turn for the worse. The car's electronics started to flicker. The dashboard lights dimmed, brightened, then dimmed again, in a rhythmic pattern that made no sense. The engine stuttered as if struggling to draw breath. Panic set in as I realized I was in the middle of one of the most isolated stretches of the highway, with no sign of civilization in sight. Then, the woman reappeared. This time, she was standing in the middle of the road, facing me. I slammed on the brakes, hard in my throat, tires screeching against the asphalt. My car stopped just inches from her. She was eerily still, her face obscured by a veil of hair in the dense fog. I could barely make out her features, but I felt her eyes on me, piercing through the darkness. Frozen in fear, I didn't know what to do. I couldn't drive around her. The risk of veering off the cliffside was too great. The silence was oppressive, filled only by the sound of my heavy breathing and a faint, irregular thump of the car's struggling engine. Then, she moved. She took a step towards the car, slow and deliberate. My heart raced, pounding against my chest as if trying to escape. Every instinct screamed at me to drive, to go through her if I must, but I was paralyzed, caught in the headlights of my own car. Suddenly, a loud bang on the rear window jolted me out of my trance. I glanced in the rearview mirror but saw nothing through the fog. When I looked back, the woman was gone. The fog seemed to retreat slightly, and the car's electronics stabilized. Not wasting a second, I pressed a gas pedal to the floor and sped away, not caring about the danger of the road or the visibility. The rest of the drive was a blur of adrenaline and fear. I don't remember much except for the overwhelming relief I felt when the fog finally began to clear as I neared San Francisco. The first hints of dawn were coloring the sky by the time I arrived, the city a welcome sight after the night's terrors. I've tried to make sense of what happened that night. 
I've researched everything from optical illusions caused by dense fog to documented hauntings along the Pacific Coast Highway. Nothing I found could fully explain the woman on the road or the bizarre electronic malfunctions in my car. Since then, I've avoided driving at night, especially along that stretch of road. The experience left me with a deep-seated unease, a constant reminder that some things are beyond our understanding. To this day, when the fog rolls in, thick and impenetrable, I can't help but think about that night, the woman in the white dress, in the longest drive of my life through the heart of California's coast. Do you know how some nights just feel off, like the air's charged with a static whisper? warning you to stay indoors. Well, one sweltering summer night in Florida, I shrugged off that primal warning, setting the stage for a drive I'll never forget. I was living in a small, forgettable town, the kind where the highlight of your day might be watching the sunset paint the sky in hues of fire over the Everglades. That evening, after a long shift at the diner, I decided to visit a friend who lived a few hours away, near the coast. The plan was simple. Hit the road by 10 p.m., make it to her place by 1 a.m., crash on her couch, and spend the next day lounging on the beach. A perfect mini vacation, or so I thought. The first half of the drive was uneventful, just me, the endless stretch of highway, and the dense, dark silhouettes of the Everglades surrounding me. I had made this drive countless times before, finding comfort in its familiarity. But that night, as I pushed deeper into the swamp's embrace, an unsettling fog began to roll in, thick and greedy, swallowing the road, the trees, and the moon hole. The radio, usually my faithful companion, through the desolate stretches of nothing, began to act up, flipping channels on its own, settling on nothing but static and the occasional fragment of a sermon or old-time song, like echoes from a bygone era. I smacked the dashboard, hoping to correct whatever loose wire was causing the issue, but it was futile. The silence in the car grew oppressive, filled only by the sound of tires against wet asphalt and my own uneven breaths. It was then, in the thickest part of the fog, that I saw her. A figure, illuminated by my headlights, standing at the edge of the road, her thumb outstretched in the universal signal for hitchhikers. She was young, maybe in her twenties, dressed in what looked like a soaked, white sundress, her dark hair hanging limply around her shoulders. It made no sense. Who would be out here, in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the night? Every sensible part of me screamed to keep driving, to leave this apparition to the swamp. But then she turned her head, locking eyes with me, and I saw it. The desperation, the fear, it clawed at my conscience, and before I knew it, I was pulling over. She climbed into the passenger seat without a word, dripping wet, shivering. I cranked up the heat and offered her a smile trying to ignore the chill that had settled in my bones. Where to? I asked, my voice sounding foreign in the heavy silence that filled the car. Just keep driving, she whispered, her voice barely audible over the hum of the engine. I nodded, merging back onto the road, the fog now seemingly parting from my headlights. We drove in silence, the tension thick, as mile markers slipped by, unseen in the night. Finally, Unable to bear the quiet any longer, I asked, what's your name? Anna, she replied, her voice a ghost of a sound. Okay, Anna, I said, trying to keep the tremble from my voice. Where are you heading at this hour? It's dangerous out here in the middle of the night. She turned to me, her eyes hollow, deep pools of despair. Home, she said. I'm trying to go home. Something in her tone, a quiver of hidden sorrow made my heart lurch. Where's home? I pressed, but she remained silent, turning her gaze back to the window, where the fog pressed against a glass like a living thing. The rest of the drive was a blur of an ease and whispered half-conversations that led nowhere. Every time I glanced at Anna, I felt a pang of fear, her presence and unnerving weight in the car. It wasn't until I reached the outskirts of civilization, where the first hints of dawn were beginning to streak the sky with light that she finally spoke again. Stop here, she said, her voice clear for the first time, as we approached an old, rundown house, its windows boarded, the garden overgrown with weeds. This is your home, I asked, unable to hide my disbelief. 
She nodded, her face serene, almost relieved. Thank you, she murmured, reaching for the door handle. You can go now. Before I could reply, she was gone, disappearing into the fog that clung to the ground like a shroud. I sat there for a moment, stunned, before the urge to follow, to ensure she made it inside safely, overtook me. But as I stepped out of the car, the house before me was silent, unwelcoming, and utterly empty. There was no sign of Anna, no footprints in the dewy grass to suggest anyone had passed through. Shaken, I returned to my car, the atmosphere now charged with an eerie calm. The drive to my friend's house was a quiet one, my mind replaying the night's events over and over. It wasn't until later, after I had shared my story, that I learned the truth. Anna, or rather, the girl who looked like Anna, had been a local. She had gone missing years ago. Her car found abandoned on the side of the road, just a few miles from that old house. They never found her, never learned what had happened. She had become a ghost story, a cautionary tale told to warn others of the dangers lurking in the Everglades at night. I don't know if what I experienced was real, or if the fog had played tricks on my tired mind, but I do know one thing. I have been chosen to bear witness, to carry the memory of a girl lost to the swamp, a silent plea for remembrance in a world all too eager to forget. Since that night, I've never driven the Everglades after dark. Some say it's fear, but I call it respect. Respect for the mysteries hidden in the fog, and for the unseen passengers who might just need a ride home. The wide, open roads of West Texas have a way of making you feel both free and insignificant. A lone traveler navigating the vast expanse of the universe under the vast canopy of the starlit sky. My old Chevy truck rumbled down Highway 90, a lifeline cutting through the heart of the desert, connecting the small, scattered towns like distant relatives who seldom visit. I was returning from a late job site in Marfa, heading back to my home in Alpine. The job had run longer than expected, pushing me out onto the road well past midnight, with only the company of my thoughts and the occasional flicker of wildlife caught in the headlights. The night was unusually dark, the moon a mere sliver, hidden behind thick clouds that promised a storm on the horizon. West Texas storms were legendary, sudden, and fierce, capable of transforming the landscape within minutes. I pushed the thought aside, focusing on the road ahead when the static on the radio gave way to a clear signal, a rarity in this remote part of the state. A song from my teenage years filled the cab, a nostalgic melody that eased the miles away. As the song faded, a soft voice broke through the static, a whisper that seemed to call my name. Jack, it murmured, barely audible over the sound of the engine and the tires on the asphalt. I shook my head, attributing it to the fatigue nipping at the edges of my consciousness. But then it came again, clearer this time, Jack. Chills ran down my spine. I reached for the dial, intending to shut it off, but my hand froze midair as the voice continued, Turn back, Jack. Danger ahead. The warning was ludicrous, the kind of thing you'd expect in a cheap poor flick, not on an empty stretch of highway in West Texas. Yet, I couldn't shake the feeling that settled in the pit of my stomach a cold dread that urged caution. I glanced at the rearview mirror, half expecting to see something sinister, but there was nothing, just the empty road swallowed by darkness. Trying to shake off the unease, I focused on the drive, increasing my speed, eager to put distance between myself and whatever prank the universe was playing on me. That's when I saw it, a figure emerging from the darkness ahead, a woman standing in the middle of the road, her arms raised as if in warning. I slammed on the brakes, the tires screeching in protest as the truck skidded to a halt mere inches from her. Heart racing, I stared at the figure bathed in the headlights glow. She was young, no more than twenty, dressed in a white dress that seemed out of place against a backdrop of the desert night. Her hair was dark, long and wild, her eyes wide with fear. Are you okay? I managed to ask, my voice sounding strange to my own ears. You need to turn back, she said her voice urgent. There's something wrong with the road ahead. What do you mean? What's wrong? I asked, skepticism warring with a growing sense of dread. She looked past me, her gaze distant, as if she could see something I couldn't. 
The road is not safe. Please turn back now. Despite my reservations, the sincerity in her voice, the palpable fear in her eyes, swayed me. I nodded, not fully understanding why, and shifted the truck into reverse, intending to turn around. That's when the night erupted into chaos. A sudden gust of wind swept across the highway, so powerful it rocked the truck. The sky, previously clear, was now a tumultuous sea of clouds, lightning streaking across like veins. And in the distance, a low rumble, growing louder, a sound no storm could produce. The woman vanished as if she'd never been there, leaving me alone to face the encroaching nightmare. The road ahead, once familiar, twisted and contorted, the asphalt cracking open to reveal a gaping maw that seemed to lead into the bowels of the earth. I floored the accelerator, turning the truck around, the engine roaring in protest. The ground shook, tremors sending jolts through the frame of the vehicle as I sped away, the surreal landscape of the Texas desert morphing into something unrecognizable, hostile. Glancing in the rearview mirror, the road behind me appeared normal. The storm and the chasm vanished as if they were mere figments of my imagination. But the terror that gripped me was real, a primal fear that urged me to keep driving, to put as much distance as possible between me and whatever hell I had just escaped. The rest of the drive home was a blur, the adrenaline and fear melding into a cocktail that kept me sharply focused on the road ahead. When I finally pulled into my driveway, the first light of dawn was breaking over the horizon casting a pale light over the world that seemed so different now. I never found an explanation for what happened that night. The radio never whispered my name again, and the stretch of Highway 90 remained just a road, nothing more. But sometimes, when the night is dark, and the wind whispers through the West Texas desert, I remember the woman in white, and the terror that night introduced lingers, a silent companion on every drive thereafter. For weeks after the incident, Sleep eluded me. When I did manage to drift off, my dreams were hunted by visions of the road twisting beneath me, the earth opening up to swallow me whole, and that woman's warning eyes. The experience was too real, too visceral to dismiss as mere fatigue or a trick of the mind. I needed answers. Determined to understand what happened, I began researching local legends and history, diving into online forums and reaching out to historians in the area. My search led me to an old legend, one that the locals whispered about but seldom spoke openly. It was a tale of a stretch of road cursed by a tragic event decades ago, where a young woman had lost her life on a stormy night, her car swallowed by the earth during a rare and violent seismic event. They said she now appears to warn lone drivers of impending danger, a spectral guardian of the highway. The more I learned, the more I felt drawn back to that stretch of road. A morbid curiosity gnawing at me. I had to see it again, to face my fears and maybe find some semblance of peace. I waited for a night just like the one when I had seen her, the air charged with the electricity of an impending storm. Driving back to the exact location, the familiar sense of an ease settled over me, a thick blanket of dread. The radio was silent this time, my only companion the sound of the engine and the tires against the asphalt. As I approached the spot where I had seen her, my headlights illuminated something in the distance, a figure standing in the middle of the road, just as before. My heart raced, my hands gripped the steering wheel tight, but I didn't stop. As I neared, the figure became clearer it was her, the woman in white, looking as real and as ethereal as the night we first met. I slowed to a stop in front of her, the engine idling. You came back, she said her voice a whisper carried by the wind. I had to, I replied, my voice steady despite the pounding in my chest. I needed to understand. She nodded, a sad smile playing on her lips. Some truths are buried deep, hidden away from the world. But you've seen beyond the veil now. You know the road isn't just a road, and the night isn't just the absence of day. There are things, forces, beyond our understanding. The air around us grew colder the first drops of rain beginning to fall, splattering against the windshield. She stepped closer, her form shimmering slightly as if made of mist. The danger isn't over, she continued, her eyes locking onto mine. It's coming, stronger this time. You need to leave, now. 
Before I could respond, a low rumble began to fill the air, growing louder, the ground beneath us starting to tremble. Panic surged, a visceral reminder of that night. Without another word, I put the truck in gear and turned around, accelerating away from her, from the road that seemed to hunger for something I couldn't comprehend. This storm broke in earnest as I drove, lightning illuminating the night in brief, stark flashes. Behind me, the rumbling grew to a deafening roar. In a mirror view mirror, I saw the earth open up, a gaping maw that spanned the width of the highway, swallowing everything in its path. I drove without stopping, the fear of being consumed by the unknown propelling me forward until the first light of dawn began to creep across the horizon. This storm abated, the earth stilled, and the road behind me was whole again, as if the night's terrors were nothing but a dream. But the memories of those nights, the woman in white, and the living, breathing road stayed with me, a constant reminder of the thin veil between our world and the mysteries that lie just beyond our perception. I never took that shot cut again, opting instead for the longer, safer routes, even if it meant extra hours on the road. The whisper of her warning, the vision of the earth swallowing the night, became a part of me, a story I seldom share for fear of disbelief. Yet, in the darkest hours, when the wind howls and the world seems to shift just beyond the reach of understanding, I remember her words, and I wonder what other truths are hidden in the shadows, waiting for the unwary to stray too close. The road less traveled holds secrets, some of which are better left undiscovered. For in the vast expanse of West Texas, under the endless sky, there are things older, deeper, and far more terrifying than we dare to imagine. If you enjoyed this story, please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future videos. Don't forget to like and comment below. See you in the future video.